Hey, hey, hey. All right, there's a whole video on just the cell membrane. So this is a good one. Remember that all cells, we already wrote this on one page of notes, all cells have a cell membrane. And that's the protective um, phospholipid around the outside. So all cells have a cell membrane. Okay, and so it says cells are said to be selectively permeable. You know what selective is. That's being choosy, right? Um, girls, you want to be choosy in who you date. And so the cell membrane is choosy or selectively. It lets some molecules like water and food in, but it doesn't let some particles in the cell membrane. So not everything is welcome inside. So the cell selects what materials can enter. The membrane also helps regulate that homeostasis. Okay, H-O-M-E-O, -E homeo means same, right? That stable environment. You want to have water inside and outside the cell equally. So um, where it says homeostasis, you want to know that word regulate. Regulate homeostasis, which is that stable environment. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is a phospholipid. And a phospholipid, I actually want you to draw it on your paper like this. It's got a little funny looking leg like that. I think the leg is actually like this. Okay, so the top part is a phosphate, and that's where it gets the name. So right here, we'll write out, and I want you to write this too on your paper. This is your phosphate, and phosphates are negatively charged, but that's like, you know what phosphorus is from the periodic table. So it's an element, phosphate. And then the the legs of this phospholipid are, they're the lipids. So that's how it gets the name, phospholipid. Now, the head of it is negatively charged, like we said. The head of it really, really likes water. So we call that hydrophilic. The head of it, we say, is hydrophilic. which means it loves water. And so think about it like a cat. A cat is going to drink water. That's a good looking cat, huh? I know, that's what I was thinking. Give it some little whiskers. Maybe the whiskers should be red. Because cats like to drink water. But the lipid part, you've known forever that oil and water don't mix, like a lava lamp. But they don't like water, so the lipid is hydrophobic, which means it is afraid of water. So, like little cat feet. And so, because this molecule has both hydrophilic and hydrophobic, we say the whole molecule is ampipathic, A M. P-H means both. Like someone who is ambidextrous, they write with both hands. Not me. I can barely write with my finger on this iPad. There we go. And this is going to create, there's two of these all around the whole cell. So there's a layer of two of them. So if here's your cell, there's actually a layer I thought there's two layers, and their little feet are, like, touching. So it looks kind of something like this. You can see there's two layers of phospholipids in there, feet to feet. They make a bilayer, and this structure is held intact by the presence of water outside. So you got water outside and inside. The negatively charged phosphorus, that's the head, right, line up to make the barrier. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at is the proteins. So in the cell membrane, there's these big proteins also. So I'll just draw a couple in my picture. And 
there's some proteins that are integral, which means inside the cell membrane, just on one side of it, like that. And there's some that are peripheral. They go all the way through, like the big ones. Oh, man, I messed up on that. Y'all don't mess up like me. I'm sorry. Integral run completely through. So let me label that since I messed up. You make sure you get it straight. There's your integral. And then the peripheral will just be on one side, like peripheral vision. So just like, let's make that a little thicker. Just like that. I'm sorry. So that's going to be peripheral. And those are proteins. And proteins are made up of amino acids. You see that in the first paragraph? So that's just what proteins are made up of. And we'll learn more about that later. Okay, functions of the protein. So what all do they do? These proteins, and here's a picture of a protein here. There's a picture of your proteins there, the big purple things. Okay, they're for transport, so some little molecules can go through the proteins. They can act as enzymes, so maybe break down uh, some food before it can enter. Cell-to-cell -cell communication, so this little flag right there is saying, you know, I'm a skin cell, hey, communication. Receptors, so they receive signals. They act as junctions. That's what stitches them together, right? Kind of like the Velcro. And then attachment point for all this ECM out here. Okay, pause the video. Run through those functions. You want to know all the functions of the protein before you come to class tomorrow. Okay, so hopefully you got that down. But let's take a look at it again for transport. That's the first one. They act as enzymes. That's the second one. They communicate, so that would be signal transduction. Don't know that word, just know cell communication. Intracellular joining or junctions, so that's E. They're attachment points. Okay, and then cell communication. Cell communication and signal transduction are really, they work together. Okay, the cholesterol in the cell membrane. So that's going to be that yellow part right there. See the big yellow? Well, cholesterol is like, um, think about it like bacon grease. And so that's going to keep it flexible. And it's going to prevent it from freezing. So it's going to be squishy like bacon grease. Um, plants that live in the tundra, it would help the plant not freeze if they have cholesterol in their cell membrane. We say that the cell membrane is a fluid mosaic model because it um, it looks like it's moving, so it's fluid, and then it's mosaic like a puzzle, like all those pieces, the carbohydrate and the proteins and the phospholipids and the cholesterol, they all work together. And so um, this model was built, not this particular model, but um, the cell membrane model was built so that we could understand it. And then the last thing, why do cells have to communicate? They have to say, hey, I'm a white blood cell, or hey, I'm a red blood cell, or hey, I'm a skin cell. So they have to communicate with one another. And these glycoproteins, a sugar attached to a protein right there. The green is the sugar. The purple is the protein. And glycolipids, which would be right here, the green attached to that little phospholipid. Here's another glycolipid right there. They are that think about that carbohydrate as almost like a flag or a label. It's labeling that what type of cell it is so that the cell can communicate. And think about it like a hand. So they can they can wave to each other and feel what type of cells um, they're around. So they can feel each other. Okay, I hope that was helpful.